First of all, I will tell you what are communicable and non-communicable diseases. So the topic of discussion today is diseases. Students, this is a very important topic. I must tell you at least one or two questions are coming in the exam of this particular topic itself. And not just in the prelims examination, not just in the prelims examination, definitely it is going to help you in the prelims examination, but in mains exam also. If we talk about science and technology, yes, the question can come out of it, out of some particular diseases or maybe some other topics where you can give reference or examples from these topics. Whatever I'll be teaching you today, you can take these examples and quote them. Then also in your GS paper 1, <clears throat> with respect to society, health, problems, issues or even if in your writing your essay, in essay exam also you can quote some examples from the particular diseases and that will be very helpful to you in quoting, in giving some quality factual points from the topic that I am teaching you. So students, I would say that keep your mind open and then holistically try to learn this topic. Okay. Anyways, uh, with respect to the diseases, particularly communicable and non-communicable, I will be focusing on the differences part. And then we will take some examples. These examples will include the diseases from bacteria. So what are the kinds of bacterial diseases? Then I will give you some examples of the viral diseases. So we will talk about polio here. We will talk about HIV, human immunodeficiency virus. And this particular virus is responsible for causing AIDS. So what is AIDS? I will tell you what exactly is the full form of AIDS. And then after that, I will talk also talk about the vectors. There are some diseases which are spread. What I am saying, remember this word, which are spread via means of some organisms. So there can be a causative agent, a cause of the disease. That particular microorganism or that particular organism can be different. However, diseases are spread via some kind of organisms let's say example of malaria so if i give you example of malaria students malaria is caused by a particular small slightly single cell unicellular eukaryotic organism plasmodium plasmodium and we have students already discussed about protista so you are aware of the topic protista in the last video i have discussed it's a group and plasmodium comes into that group but if somebody asked you how malaria is spread so i hope each one of you knows the answer even if you are not aware right now then you will definitely get to know the answer here anophilis mosquito so at least even if you don't know the uh, if you don't remember the name of the organism as such i definitely assure this that many of you are aware that anophilis mosquito mosquito is a basic cause uh, for the spread of the disease mosquito is a basic reason for the spread of the disease at least this much fact you are aware of anophilis is the name of the female mosquito that is a scientific name so here in this video you will learn all such facts and i will teach you all these things so what are vectors i am coming to the point again what are vectors vectors are those organisms which are helpful in spreading the disease instead and the cause is something else so mosquito here in the malaria example it is a, a responsible uh, organism for the spread of the disease so we will call mosquito as vector so sir can any of the living organism be the vector yes animals can be vector like i have uh, already said insects uh, mosquito is already a vector Plants, non-living things, non-living things can also be vector like water, like uh, soil, dust. They can also spread the diseases. But we are, when we say when we say the word vector, we generally we generally take this word vector with respect to living organisms. Okay. 
so we take vectors as a word with respect to living organisms which help in spreading the diseases so this would be the overall topic i will be discussing and i hope you are aware the importance of the topic and some questions that have, that have come already in the past in the previous year question prelims i will discuss those questions also okay so let's start the topic first and foremost thing is what is disease you must know how will you define a disease so disease is some kind of a harmful deviation the word here is harmful deviation from what any kind of normal structural and functional state of the organism now you are being an orga organism as a human being or an animal let's say some example of an animal or some example of an organism if the normal state structural and functional if they both are deviated from the normal form and that too in a harm harmful manner then we will say that an organism a living person a individual a entity living entity is suffering from a disease so these disease can be categorized into communicable and non communicable diseases if i ask you covid 19 so this part is uh, everyone each and every one of you is aware covid 19 is it communicable disease or non communicable so this is a, a even a small kid knows about it that covid 19 is a communicable disease so communicable means what when we say a disease is passed from one person to another if it can spread from one person to another then we will say it is a communicable disease and if some diseases are not you are aware some diseases are not transferred from one person to another for example if until unless i take the examples you it will be difficult for you to understand if i take the example of a diabetes if a person is diabetic say this person here is diabetic so diabetic person is not going to transmit this particular disease to a healthy person so this person here is healthy and this person here is disease during the common uh, normal conversation being sitting in the same room uh, having um, said uh, talking talking about uh, something and eating food and get going out and having get together party none of the cases you will find that a person who is having a diabetes will transmit diabetes to another person similar is the case with cancer and similar is the scenario with some kind of allergies what are allergies some people have allergy with respect to dust some people have other kind of allergies like example gluten gluten is something that is present in wheat <clears throat> and people who consume this gluten they are allergic to it and uh, some kind of uh, digestive issues that occur in those people uh, you would have seen that uh, gluten free biscuits they come in the market gluten free products come in the market this assures that allergies can be of different types people may have gluten as an problem having an allergy out of this particular uh, gluten compound uh, some people have uh, allergies with respect to pollen grains dust i have already told you so these kind of allergies are specific to individual it is not going to transfer from one person to another but on the same hand if i just uh, clear this thing out on the same hand if we talk about diseases like malaria i just discussed it spreads uh, through a bite of the mosquito aids hiv common cold or tuberculosis or even covid 19 covid 19 so all these kind of diseases are communicable so i hope now the basic difference is clear between communicable and non communicable they are caused by pathogens now this word is very interesting what are pathogens see uh, if i take you to the next slide that would be better way to explain it uh, there are two terms one is microbes and another term is pathogens when we say microorganism the general sense makes it that these uh, organisms are microscopic that you will be able to see these microorganism only through your uh, not through your naked eyes but only through a instrument that is a microscope however pathogens these uh, these microscopic organisms if i categorize them just one more point if uh, these microscopic organisms are further categorized into either they can be good to you with respect to humans let us say or they can be bad to you 
so if we further categorize them as good so how these microorganisms are good to you they are helpful in uh, uh, making some food products you are aware of uh, uh, fermented food south indian food dosa you eat uh, dhokla you eat or uh, some kind of other beverages fermentation is the process where the fermented uh, product is obtained and that particular product is fermented with the help of some microorganisms so there are other and many uses are there and through these uses we say that these organisms are very much helpful to us they can be helpful in a biogas plant these microorganisms can be helpful in other kind of industrial waste removal so there are many examples where these microorganisms are beneficial to us but there are examples when these microorganisms they can be bad to us they can be uh, the reasons behind for causing of the disease so pathogen is the term which actually clearly states that disease causing microorganisms all those microorganisms which are bad and are responsible for the cause of the disease they are called as pathogens so pathogens the term will always be used as a negative connotation with respect to microorganisms now let's look at this word here that communicable diseases are caused by pathogens okay but what is the reason for non communicable disease spread the reason is some kind of a deficiency there can be deficiency of vitamins maybe in an individual and you are already aware that due to lack of some kind of vitamins in the body and some kind of minerals there can be some deficiency disorders some problems for example uh, night blindness can be caused because of the lack of the deficiency of the vitamin a scurvy can be the reason behind because of the deficiency of the vitamin c i will be teaching the vitamins topic further in part 3 but these are some examples with respect to allergy also we can say that non communicable diseases is spread through allergies i have already given you as example so these are the basic differences between communicable and non communicable diseases in addition to this we can further classify uh, these particular diseases into other two types uh, one can be acute so there can be some acute diseases and other can be chronic diseases chronic okay i'll tell you the differences this is another type of difference uh, the difference between two types of uh, diseases acute and chronic diseases acute diseases are those which can be cured in short span of time for example of uh, let's say 3 to 5 days or maybe 10 days a person may be having common cold may be having some viral disease may be having some kind of uh, uh, disease caused by an organism but after some time that person will be cured so even if a person can be cured in 10 days 15 days that particular kind of disease will be called as acute diseases however if the disease stays with an organism with a living organism animal or human anybody uh, then for a longer duration of time longer duration of time then we will say that the person is having chronic disease sir what about the percentage or what about the Uh, recovery of the person so then i will say that if a person is suffering from acute diseases after some time the recovery is 100% and a person will be better he will he or she will be feeling better in uh, sooner and later and then the recovery will be 100% however with respect to chronic disease recovery is not 100% you talk about example asthma i talk about example of asthma so it's a very much chronic disorder right it's a chronic disease and it it happens and stays with the person for very long duration of time hiv okay chronic it can go uh, for long term uh, number of days and long duration on the life of the person can be of stake sometimes a person infected with hiv uh, may die in 3 months 
or even person suffering from HIV can live for 5 years also. So that depends, that depends on the virus, the magnitude, the virus is impact, uh, impact, uh, impacting the organism and uh, how the virus is replicating in the body that those things can be the reason for this purpose. Anyways, here the example can be I have already taken uh, some kind of a cold viral disease if a person is having. So such kind of disease that can be cured in short duration of time are called as acute diseases. Next way or the another way of categorizing diseases can be congenital GE congenital or acquired. So how will you define congenital diseases? These congenital diseases are since birth, since birth of the baby. So by birth, if a baby is born with some kind of a defect, some kind of a problem, then we will say it's a congenital disease. Examples are, example color blindness or maybe another kind of, another types of uh, genetic disorders. So we will say a person is actually by birth having that particular problem. Okay. But acquired means during the lifetime during the lifetime a person will be acquiring those particular diseases an example here is n number of any number of disease any disease cancer is there let's say if it is by birth if a problem is there by birth then it will be congenital but generally generally is, uh, is saying so uh, a person acquired it over the period of time environmental pollution can cause many kind of diseases can many kind of chronic diseases also so there you will put you will put these diseases into the category of the acquired diseases. So I have given you three types of differences, communicable, non-communicable, acute diseases, chronic diseases, congenital diseases and acquired diseases. So I hope the basics are getting cleared with example I am trying to give you the answer. I have uh, mentioned some of the diseases here with respect to what are caused by bacteria, what are caused by viruses and some of the diseases may be the causative agent is bacteria or virus but they are passed through vectors for example chikungunya and dengue they are caused by viruses but the mode the spread is mosquito and recently also you are aware that dengue is a very very big problem dengue is, is spreading in most of the times in the in the urban uh, cities particularly Delhi area, NCR region, capital region is severely impacted and every year some kind of advisories are given to the citizens, awareness campaigns are run all over the people who are residing there. So that then we can say that these diseases can be controlled if a vector, if this particular vector is controlled somehow. Uh, other examples, malaria have already discussed, uh, Zika virus is there, it was very much in news and that is why UPSC already asked this question in the past. Uh, these are some of the examples. There, there is uh, no limit to learn the examples. There are many, many examples, hundreds of examples and there is a limited capacity uh, for each one of you to learn those examples. What I suggest here is uh, learn at least four or five examples so that if you were asked somewhere in the mains examination and you could quote some of the examples, it would be good. And even in the prelim prelims examination, uh, you will find that UPSC generally ask questions uh, that are of general in nature and diseases which are common in nature. So if you have very fair idea, a little bit of idea what kind of a causative agent is responsible for the cause of the disease, you will be able to eliminate the options in the examination hall. Anyways, some of the uh, diseases that are spread by viruses, they can be measles, mumps, flu, common cold, smallpox, I hope you are aware that smallpox, it has been globally eradicated, eradicated. So smallpox is globally eradicated. Herpes, polio, polio is a polio virus, polio virus. Rabies, rabies is a spread a bite of the dog. You are aware. So it is a basically a virus uh, and also the, we can say it's vector here is dog basically. 
Ebola virus, another example is Ebola virus. UPSC asked already in the past about Ebola virus. I will show you the question. And uh, the question was very unique because it linked biology plus geography. It linked biology with geography and then it framed the question. So this is UPSC is all about. It uh, tries to be very unpredictable and that's how uh, students fall into the trap. Anyways, uh, with respect to bacterial diseases, Cholera. Cholera is caused by a bacteria named as Vibrio, Vibrio cholerae. Leprosy, tuberculosis, TB. We will discuss tuberculosis in detail. Plague, syphilis. Syphilis is a kind of STD that is sexually transmitted diseases and it's spread by bacteria. Okay. And then anthrax. So the example for anthrax is bacillus. The name of the bacteria is bacillus. Okay. These are the some common names. I have uh, tried my best to incorporate the common names uh, with respect to the categories. Have a fair idea. Uh, listen to the video twice and you will, then you will be able to understand it. One example is a very good example. I will discuss the disease in detail. This is lymphatic filariasis and the common name here is Hathi Pao. Hathi Pao or it is also called as elephantiasis. I will write here elephantiasis. So you would have seen some people or you would have seen the photographs of the people who suffered from such kind of a disease where one of the leg is so much swollen up that it seems that the leg is looking like an elephant's foot. So that's why the name is derived from the name of the uh, animal elephant. So the name here is elephantiasis. Okay. So let's discuss some of the diseases one after the other. Before that, before that, I want to teach you a topic that is the means of spread of infectious diseases. Where will you find such kind of a topic in NCRTs? I would say class 9th. You can find the uh, chapter why do we fall ill and there you will find all these basics uh, mentioned in the particular chapter. Read it. It will be helpful to you. However, I am telling you all these things in short here itself. Okay. So there are various means of spread of the disease. First, the disease can spread via air. Air can be the mode. Water. So the diseases will be waterborne diseases. Some diseases are sexually transmitted diseases. I already mentioned uh, in the last slide STDs. That is syphilis is caused by bacteria. And AIDS. The full form of AIDS is acquired immuno deficiency syndrome so exchange of body fluids the reason is exchange of body fluids from infected person to the healthy person if there is some kind of an exchange of body fluids from a health uh, from an infected to healthy person the healthy person will also be infected it is caused by virus and the name of the virus is HIV, human immunodeficiency virus. So this is a sexually transmitted diseases. Generally, via sexual contact, these exchange of body fluids occur and the disease is spread. However, when I will teach the topic AIDS to you, I will also tell you the other means of spread of the disease. You must know. Vectors I have already explained. I have already explained in the past, uh, past slides what are vectors. So you see Anopheles mosquito is responsible for the spread of the disease malaria. So the particular uh, mosquito is a vector here. Then waterborne diseases. If some diseases uh, are spreading because of the contaminated water. So some bacteria would be there. Some virus could be there in the water. And if you intake the, that particular contaminated uh, water or uh, if you are inhaling that particular contaminated air, the diseases can spread via air and water means also. Uh, with respect to water, cholera, amoebiasis, okay, and with respect to air, common cold, pneumonia, tuberculosis, so you know TB, TB can spread via air, okay, coronavirus, coronavirus is spread via uh, having a close proximity with the person standing in front and the droplets that will be uh, given by one person that if they are inhaled by the healthy person that that person also can get infected, okay. So this is the means of spread of the diseases. Now, what kind of a question was asked by UPSC in 2018? Let's try to solve the question. The question was very simple. Question was, which of the following, consider the following options and which of the following options above 
spread the plant diseases now this was unique part here that uh, instead of giving human diseases it asked you regarding plant diseases so if somebody asked me that sir do we need to understand and know all the kind of diseases that happen to plants animals insects is it is it possible to learn everything i would say no you need not to learn everything let's look at the options and then if you have already read this topic it will be easier for you to answer this question so can a plant disease spread via air can air be the mode yes diseases can spread via mode of the air so dust it may be present in the air and it may carry some kind of virus it may carry some kind of bacteria and then the disease can spread so b or second option should be there so if two has to be there then only these two options two second uh, particular option is present so this cannot be the answer then can rain cause the particular uh, disease with respect to plants so definitely water if it is running from one plant to another and if one plant is impacted or infected with respect to bacteria virus any anything uh, any microscopic organism then rain can also bring that particular virus and it can or bacteria and can, can spread to other trees as well so two and three they both should come and only one option is there where two and three are coming wind again we talk about air so wind should also be the answer so two and four should come so in that case you would have said uh, you should have said that again c and d looks to be the answer and they are not the answers what are the options where students can get confused is with respect to birds if they say that birds are not spreading the diseases so i would say then in that case birds would be called as vectors definitely they can spread diseases if they are <coughs> Uh, eating fruits from one plant and then they are spreading that particular disease from their uh, mouth from their uh, wings from their legs then definitely the disease can spread from one particular tree to another tree so all of the above all of the above options can be said as the means of spread of the disease okay so this question comes particularly from this particular topic okay i hope you are aware now if such kind of a question is asked again apply some common sense instead of cramming all kinds of diseases so students next topic of discussion is diseases that are caused by bacteria so here we will look forward for some two to three examples of the bacterial diseases the most common of them is tuberculosis tuberculosis is a very very big issue uh if i say most of the developing countries they are facing the problem of tuberculosis diseases uh how this disease is spread so you can see here this is spread via air so the mode of transmission is air if one of the person is infected then he or she if coughs up then in the droplets in the air if they are inhaled by the healthy person then the healthy person will also be what happened infected in particularly do tuberculosis only spread by the means of air no not exactly tuberculosis can spread or i would say what types of tuberculosis are so tuberculosis are basically of many types but 85% of the cases they belong to pulmonary tuberculosis okay and i would say that 15% are other where tb can happen in joints also so not all type of tuberculosis are pulmonary only 85% of them are uh, pulmonary hence forth we can say that only this particular pulmonary tuberculosis it is spread via air okay uh, developing countries i have already told you india is uh, one of the country where we can say that each and every one of us almost 90% of us we have the bacteria in our body and this bacteria is mycobacterium so the bacteria name which is responsible for the cause of the disease is mycobacterium tuberculosis uh, just remember the genus this is the genus so the scientific name are written in two parts genus and species the first word is the genus and the second name is the species so this is genus mycobacterium so 90% of us in india if i say or developing country bangladesh or pakistan 90% of the people they have bacteria 
in their uh, in their body but it is not active it is not active it is in its latent stage and we are not exactly having any symptoms of tuberculosis but those of the cases where this particular bacteria becomes active in the body then we say that the person is actually suffering from tuberculosis disease having the bacteria in the body doesn't mean the person is basically having the disease disease we will say the disease is happening in the person only because when we will say that the symptoms are shown up in that individual okay students so this is how we can say so i just clean this part up now let's come to the basics this is the name of the bacteria i've already told you most often it is pulmonary tuberculosis so which particular organ will be impacted the answer is lungs mode of transmission i've already told you air via coughing sneezing and spitting this particular uh, droplets having the bacteria they can spread from healthy uh, infected person to a healthy person symptoms include cough with sputum sputum is uh, uh, whatever cough and saliva is coming out of the individual blood at times chest pain so cough with sputum and blood so whenever a person is coughing maybe sputum a cough is coming up or blood can also comes up sometimes chest pain weakness weight loss all these can be the symptoms of tuberculosis pulmonary tuberculosis we are talking about pulmonary tuberculosis uh, is there any treatment sir yes there is a treatment six months or nine months can be the duration of the treatment uh, short courses of antibiotics are given to the individual and yes we have antibiotics standard antibiotics antibiotics are available in the market and yes a patient can be cured completely do we have a vaccine for tuberculosis yes we have a vaccine and the name of the vaccine is bcg so the full form is written over here you can see that this is the name of the full form uh, this is the name of the vaccine bacilli calmin urine is the name of the vaccine you need not to remember the whole uh, difficult name just remember bcg is the name of the vaccine so what exactly is the problem with respect to tuberculosis uh, if i just show you the structure of the mycobacterium how it looks like it is rod shaped bacteria it is rod shaped bacteria so this is the bacteria and we stain it this is the rod shed bacteria we stain it uh, with the dyes and henceforth in the microscope you can see such rod shaped pink color bacteria okay and then they are uh, definitely aggregated in the lungs and x-ray x-ray is the best method to identify it okay so why we are discussing tuberculosis as such what exactly the main issue and problem which is arising today with respect to tuberculosis which is very much alarming the answer here is two types of tb one is mdr tb that is multiple drug resistant tb and the second one is xdr that is extremely drug resistant tuberculosis so sir if you are saying it is drug resistant what does it mean exactly it means that if this is a bacteria and this is a person who is suffering from tuberculosis and the bacteria is inside the lungs of the individual what will you do you will give that individual some drugs and even after consuming those drugs if this bacteria is not getting killed then we will say that the bacteria today is resistant and resistant to that particular drug or antibiotic so this condition is prevalent today what we want to say with respect to these two terms so let's define these terms the first term is mdr second one is xdr so while treating a patient while treating a tuberculosis suffering patient disease suffering patient we give some drugs in proper format so there are some first line of drugs then there are second line of drugs and then there are third line of drugs so some drugs are not that much strong they are mild uh, first these drugs are given to the patient and then the doses and the type of the drugs are increased and the combination is also taken care okay over the past 30 40 decades what is happening is that the nature of the organisms it is changing 
they are time and again what is happening to them they are uh, mutating sometimes mutating means the word is mutation what does it mean mutation means that there are some kind of changes that are occurring in the dna or rna or the genetic material or the genetic material of the particular organism and henceforth the structure of the particular microorganism is changing or its infection the rate of infection is changing so we are already seeing all these things with respect to covid 19 so you are already aware that many of the uh, variants are coming up time and again and you are seeing all that in news alpha beta delta so what are these variants are all about these variants are because of the mutations that are occurring in the genetic material of the individual organism and henceforth the structure is changing or their capacity to infect the individual is changing this is what is happening in last 30 40 decades that the organism they are changing at a much faster rate but we are not able to discover many drugs so there are limited drugs that are available today and that too the new drugs the the synthetic drugs what we are trying to make they're not up to that mark okay so in that case we can we want to say that it since many years there are some first line of drugs second line of drugs and third line of drugs that we try to treat the patient with these drugs but if if a patient is resistant or the bacteria in which the uh, the bacteria which is present in the individual if that particular bacteria is resistant now with respect to the first line of tb drugs then we will say the person is suffering from multiple drug resistant uh, tuberculosis multi drug resistant tuberculosis what are those drugs the name of these drugs is isoniazid and rifampicin if you can remember the name it's good or else it's all right do not uh, over stress on these particular drugs we are not doctors we just need to have a very fair idea that the problem today is of multiple drug resistant and extremely drug resistant in extremely drug resistant cases the patient is not responsive to even second line of drugs so if the second line of drugs patient is not responsive that means it is a severe condition and many a times a patient are not responding to any kind of drugs and then that case in that case the problem is in that case this this kind of a tuberculosis is difficult to treat this kind of a bacteria is difficult to stop and if it is spreading via air from one person to another this becomes very difficult for us to counter and that's why the disease tuberculosis is such a problem to us and not even in the developing countries it is now becoming a problem in the developed countries also so in developed countries also what they are doing now that if you if you try to go to any kind of a, a western country or developing country developed country uh, where you say that i want to study here or i need visa for more than six months one year three years then what they do they ask you as a student they ask you many a times as a person who's trying to reside there for more than one year that show the x-ray at airport they will ask you to show the x-ray and the reason behind is any kind of respiratory disease that you're carrying is it so or not they would they would definitely want to check it so this is the scenario i hope you are aware now that the problem is becoming more serious day by day and what we need is we need new drugs that should come up and also we need to make people aware that this problem is very much serious and henceforth do not do not use the drugs unnecessary as well so sometimes what happens is that uh, people consume antibiotics uh, even when not prescribed by the doctors and many a times it is also seen it is many times doc, uh, what has been seen that if a patient has to be treated for nine months let us suppose or six months and i say that i take the example of tuberculosis only nine months or six months if a patient is asked to take the particular drugs antibiotics and timely uh, but if he or she is uh, getting well after two to three months they just leave the uh, course in between and when an individual leaves the course in between that gives opportunity to the bacteria and microorganisms to flourish more so you should not leave your course in between and in addition should not take antibiotics without prescription as well okay another topic which is very very uh, important topic for you all 
is anti microbial resistance nowadays uh, we are using lot of sanitizers nowadays we are using uh, lots and lots of uh, drugs already as in the case uh, i've shown before uh, sometimes misuse of the drugs is also occurring and because of which what is happening today is that microbial resistance is happening this is one of the very important topics i will teach this topic in detail in further topics uh, here i just wanted you to focus on these particular two terms okay students so if i ask you that are there any initiatives taken by the government or private bodies then there are two initiatives at least that you must you must mention first is the initiative taken in 2019 uh, the slogan of the campaign was given as tb harega aur desh jeetega so this campaign is for creating awareness among the masses and also for elimination of elimination of the tb that if once the people are aware that uh, yes okay uh, if you are coughing then please uh, use your uh, close your mouth uh, use your uh, handkerchief or get isolated for some time if the symptoms of tb are occurring get early diagnosis and take early treatment and do not leave your treatment in between if all these things are taken care of and people are made aware of this all these things then definitely the the problem can be at least the magnitude of the impact can be reduced okay another project is saksham project this project is by a private body that is tata institute of social sciences it is providing psychological social counseling to the tb patients uh, then one particular uh, yojana is nikshay poshan yojana this is giving the financial support to the tb patients so you can quote these kind of uh, initiatives and even if the question is not on tuberculosis if the question is on general health then also you can quote this particular example as a initiative by the government okay students vaccine i've already told you this is the name of the vaccine bcg uh, one interesting story i would like to tell you here with respect to bcg uh, you all are aware that first wave of covid 19 Uh, that occurred in 2020 exactly so you are aware that uh, india was not that much impacted at that point of time many of the european countries they were much severely impacted western countries were impacted but india was up to the mark uh, at that uh, at that particular stage and not much uh, severity and casualties were occurring at that point of time though second wave was very much uh, crucial for us and uh, much damage was done in uh, second wave but editorial came in the newspaper and that editorial said something regarding the bcg so that's the story i want to share here that one of the editorials what they said is that each and every individual every baby or most of the babies that are born in the country they are given vaccine bcg and tuberculosis is the reason that this vaccine is given however uh, tuberculosis also spread via means of air air is the mode of transmission and covid 19 is also spreading via air so what the editorial uh, said is that these developing countries since vaccine of bcg is given to the kids and babies in the uh, very early stage this is one of the reasons that bcg is a potential vaccine or potential path of creating vaccine for corona virus and this is why uh, developing countries are not much impacted like india and european countries and western countries are more impacted because their bcg vaccine is not given uh, but then you know that when second wave came all these uh, points and facts were just eliminated and uh, this was not true this was not true so these kind of editorials come sometimes and then they hypothesize that this could be one of the reasons that indians are not suffering from covid-19 so we all come across these things and then this is how science is all about that one hypothesis can be rejected later by further research so i have just told you this story so that you are a bit aware and how the editorials you read what sense they make sometimes is not true when the research further goes on anyways uh, this part is clear bcg part is clear the next topic is trunet trunet is nothing it's just a device or uh, a testing kit for tuberculosis and uh, when covid 19 came so it was used uh, to detect diagnose the particular uh, covid 19 uh, test and it used to give the results in very early stages one hour so that's why it was as such used the name of the treatment for tuberculosis is dots 
what is the full form of dots this is directly observed therapy short courses so dots you would have seen many cricketers and uh, film stars that they came uh, they used to come in uh, news and to, uh, tv also and then they used to say that do not leave the treatment of dots uh, dots treatment is very important so this is particular uh, logo and uh, this logo is for uh, tb harega desh jitega so this treatment is very important and if this treatment is somewhere asked you can definitely uh, quote for it is tuberculosis okay so these are the basics i hope tuberculosis topic is done the most important topic here was mdr and xdr tb problem and this is one of the bacterial diseases that i wanted to discuss with you in detail some facts if i want to give you and these facts uh, can be used in your introduction part in one of, in any of the answers in fact uh, quoting tuberculosis as an example or maybe in the conclusion that in india one fourth of the global cases are registered with respect to tuberculosis who did its study and in that study it told uh, that uh, one fourth of the cases global cases are from india and approximately it is 26.9 lakh cases however later on india also did its study and then later on india also accepted it that in the tb report 2020 india said that yes we do agree that uh, high burden of cases are there in india it is approximately 24 lakhs not 27 lakhs 26.9 it's approximately 24 lakhs but yes it is again a very big number and we must do something to eliminate it it was also said that eight percent of the tuberculosis cases it is because of the tobacco usage in india so if tobacco usage is such then that is why this is becoming one of the reasons for tuberculosis in india with respect to the childhood tuberculosis then it was said that 31 percent of the global burden is in india that if we continue if we calculate with respect to the children who are suffering from tuberculosis it is 31 percent so that means it is more than one fourth okay it is approximately th one third actually and then there is an increase in the mortality rate also with respect to tuberculosis and since 2019 and 20 it is 11% increase so students see this shows the gravity of the situation the magnitude of this particular disease uh, yes we came across uh, covid-19 and it it create created a uh, havoc in the country and lockdown also happened but uh, do not think that only such a virus viral disease was only threatful to us there are many other diseases which we know in general also and it is creating lot of problem many casualties are happening it's because of these particular communicable diseases okay students so looking forward to all these facts india made its target and the target to eliminate tb is 2025 so indian target india has decided that by 2025 by 2025 india is going to eliminate tuberculosis but this looks bit unrealistic now because of the covid situation uh, two years uh, government was not in that position to look after the patients and go for the diagnosis and try to work hard on the ground uh, so this this looks difficult uh, today but this is a target if someone asks you then definitely quote it and in future if this target is extended then definitely we will look forward for it however who if we talk about the world health organization what is the target decided by who as an organization it is 2030 so what upsc will do that india's target is 2030 and who target is 2025 it will swap the years and then you will be confused so you will be confused i do not want you to be confused indian target is way less uh, the number of years is five less in comparison to the what who has decided so we are much forward in this respect okay so this was the overall topic this topic i wanted to do share in detail now we will look for small topics that uh, like uh, typhoid is the example so second example is typhoid typhoid is a basic uh, condition disease it is caused by again bacteria and the name of the bacteria is salmonella typhi okay and it is spreads via contaminated food and contaminated water what are the basic symptoms it's basically fever vomiting diarrhea situation is there and these all things can happen when a person is suffering from typhoid is there any vaccine available so such kind of questions can come up in the future that what type of vaccine and which vaccine is are available for particular diseases for example if it in that if that question comes in then definitely it is going to give you an example of hiv 
And if I ask you, are there any commercial vaccines available for HIV? So the answer is no. Definitely many vaccines are in trials. But no such acceptable vaccine is there which has been used for masses. So HIV has no vaccine as per now. Definitely they are in trials only. And the reason behind is the mutation. Mutation of the virus. So virus topic as such I will tell you in detail in uh, particular subsequent slides. Here I want you to focus on typhoid that yes there is a vaccine available and yes the antibiotics are also available in the market to cure tuberculosis. So recently a news came with respect to the type bar TCV vaccine. This was the first conjugate vaccine. Remember this, this is not the first vaccine for tuberculosis. It is the first conjugate vaccine qualified by the WHO. Now the question arises is what is a conjugate vaccine, right? This is the question. So conjugate vaccine is made up of multiple parts. So if I tell you the basics of vaccine, what vaccine does is that an individual takes in the weak uh, antigen and using this weak antigen, antibodies, antibodies are developed in the individual. So I've used two terms here. First term is antibiotic. This is the first term, antibiotic. And the second term I used here is antibodies. Remember this, antibiotics are the drugs. And antibodies are the proteins. Antibodies are the proteins that are produced in our body. And it helps us in eliminating the pathogen, which is entering as an antigen in our body. So antigen is something that is foreign to us and entering in our body. So what is a conjugate vaccine then? The conjugate vaccine is made up of multiple parts or we can say multiple antigens. So that the response of uh, antibodies making it, uh, it, it is much faster if I say and weak antigen and strong antigen <clears throat> they are attached together and used together so that a good response of antibiotics occur in our body. So this is the type bar TCV is the first conjugate vaccine for typhoid. Uh, it is developed by Bharat Biotech and uh, if it is asked that which country is using it first, so it is Pakistan and it is on the recommendation of the WHO. Definitely they will say that it is on the recommendation of WHO, uh, but uh, India is making it. So they are not taking it directly from India. They are taking it by root of the WHO. So it's okay. It's fine. Okay. So this was a news last uh, two years ago so i wanted you to uh, discuss here in itself because one question on pneumococcal pneumonia pneumococcal conjugate vaccine was asked in the past so such kind of questions are generally asked so you should be already prepared